I'm Patrick Bailey with IQList.com. Today is March 29th, 2018, and in this video, I'm going to explore the question, what is open SCAD and what can you do with it? Now, the fact that I'm creating this video uh, needs to be credited to the uh, YouTube user Osloy. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, and what had happened is uh, I made a pre another video where I was going over some attempts to try to silence my Prusa i3 MK3 printer, which I was partially successful at. And so as part of that attempt to do that, what I did is I looked around and I saw other people who were printing uh, dampener feet for their, for their printer. So the Prusa i3 MK3 out of the box come with, come with this little rubber foot that goes into the extruded aluminum down there. And I looked around and I found, I looked a bit and I couldn't find what I, I found something that was okay. And what I found was this on Thingiverse, happens to be Thing 954905. And I printed that guy out, but as you can see, it's kind of low. So uh, what I did is I actually took it and I printed it taller. So all I did was just uh, in the proofs of control, make it, I forget how much I did, like 150% or 200%. I don't really call, I made it taller. So it actually still fit the extruder, but it was a little taller. Um, and it kind of worked, but a couple of problems. It's a little bit too stiff for a dampener, in my opinion, the way I did it. Uh, and also, it can fall off, so it's not really holding on there really well. And uh, so I was thinking about once I learned how to design stuff, that maybe I could make something that would hook in and, and hook into the upper part of the extruder. Uh, but at the time, I was very, very new to 3D printing. I'm still new, but I'm not just the first week out. I'm a couple more weeks in, but I'm still very, very new. And so what um, what Osloy suggested, Osloy, Oslo suggested is to use uh, he su suggested use Open SCAD, and so what he did is he actually went and designed something. So he designed something in Open SCAD and sent me a link. And at the time, I was trying to learn too many things, and so I kind of put it in the back burner. And then I, uh, last few days, I finally got some time and started started opening it and looking at it and seeing what I could do with it. And in particular, and in particular, his design. And so I'm really, really stoked. It's really, really cool. Um, so let me go over what I found and go over his designs and see what I can do. Uh, so first of all, uh, one of the most important things is how do you pronounce Open SCAD? And I, so I went onto their site and Open SCAD is pronounced Open SCAD, not Open SCAD. Um, and so what is it? What is it? What is it? If you go to their OpenSCAD.org, what they have done is they have made. Uh, there's probably different ways of thinking of it, but they've made. 3D, 3D design as code. So you could write code in here. You could say a square and make this square, I mean like a, make this square four by four and then extrude it 10 high or make this a sphere and make it uh, 10 millimeters big and then put a square inside of it and, and uh, subtract that part of the square as code. And so you'd put that code in there and run it and then it would make the design that you made. So I thought that was really interesting. And if you asked me a couple of weeks ago, being very, very new, and I'm still new, I'm just not very, very new, but I'm pretty very new. Uh, if you asked me a few weeks ago, I would say, uh, if you're gonna design stuff, just kind of looking over the fence and see what other people are doing and what's available, I, I was saying, go use Fusion 360. And in fact, right now in our homeschool curriculum, I'm, I'm trying to teach my children how to use Fusion 360 to design prints, in part because Fusion 360 is very, very powerful, and you can take it to crazy levels because it's used in industry for so many things. And on another level, I wanted my kids to I want my kids to learn that uh, because that actually has value in the marketplace. And so someday, if all of a sudden they become designers or draftsmen, they've actually learned a real tool that's actually used in the real world, and they know how to use it. Versus some uh, other 3D design tool. I don't even, I'm not even sure what's available. I just saw Fusion 360, Autodesk, and I went, let's learn this. Everyone else can just go on the back burner until you convince me that you're better than them. Uh, and I saw no other reason to look at anything else. But Osloy showed, showed this, open SCAD, and I went, oh, there is a reason for something else. This SCAD, it's, it's not a designer. It doesn't fall in the same category as Fusion 360. The idea is I can write a design as code and as simple code, I can save it. I can pass it around. You can make modules. So if you're a coder, you can look at this and go, wow, that's very interesting um, and very easy to do. And also very precise in what you're designing. 
I don't think it takes the place of Fusion 360, but it's a, another alternative to go down. So I am very excited to learn more about it. And I've done a little bit with it. I still got a lot to learn about it, but I'm like, wow, this is, this is really cool. Um, so with that, let me go install it and kind of go through some basics at a beginner level because I'm only a beginner myself. Okay, so good news. This is open source free software. Not only can you download and use it, but if you want to contribute to that community and actually write code to make this thing better, it's out there. You can sit there and download it and tweak it if you're if you're that if you're if you're a coder and you know how to do those kind of things, especially if you're a 3D coder, um, which I happen to not be really these days. And I'd have to go get my brain into the, back into that, and I didn't do much of it back in the day to begin with. But with that, uh, here's I'm going to go download and install it. So here here's their website, OpenSCAD.org. And I'm going to go here. It looks like they have a, win a Windows version, a Linux version, an OS 10 version. So I'm on Windows 10. So I'm just going to click on here and download this version. I had installed it earlier, but I just removed it so I could reinstall it and show you this procedure. So after it downloads, click on that. And then click yes, and then just install. Oh, it already sees it. Abort, retruffle. Hi. Oh, because it, I guess their delete didn't really delete everything. Or, Okay, let me let me go delete that folder. I guess their folder didn't delete everything as it removed everything. But I can do that. So let me go into program files over here and open SCAD. There we go. So over here I still have an open SCAD folder, I guess. So I will just delete it. Delete. Oh, someone's let me abort. Come on. Right, let me cancel that. Let me, let me try it again. Let's open another program. What are you opening? Okay, let me go investigate that and remove this and start over here again in a second. Well, it turns out it's probably not a good idea to try to delete OpenSCAD while you have it open. So, <laughs> oh well, let me go reinstall this again. So I click yes, so we click install, and it should install pretty quick. It's already completed, done, cool. So we'll close that, and then I'll come down here and open, search for OpenSCAD, and there it is. So I will just open it and I will say new. And then here, and I'm still new, I'm still trying to figure all this out myself. Um, oh, in fact, let me let me do this thing. Over here, and I'll put this URL on the show notes. Here's a great place to go because this is their cheat sheet of all their methods and, and terminology that to start you with. And there's some other websites out there to get you started, but it's nice to have a cheat sheet of all the little uh, things you can do with it. So I will I'll make this a little smaller and keep up the cheat sheet in the background. Okay. So over here is my is my coding area, and over here is my viewing area. So I can go over here and I can say um, cube. So I can say make a cube and make it four, which I think makes it four on every side, and then semicolon to say inline. And then up here I can press this, which says render. So I'll click on that and it renders my cube. Now, from what I understand at this point, um, this is unitless. So it's for whatever. But when I did this before and I set numbers, it actually, and I imported it into, and I export it as an STL file and I import it into Prusa Control, that four actually became four millimeters. So even though it's unitless, I think it actually kind of equates, or maybe it's, wait, did I do that wrong? Well, we'll try. Um, in fact, I know that's, 50. So let me go. Let me do. Let me do a little test. So there's 50 units, right? So I made a square, and now that I've made something, uh, I can click this STL button and save an STL file off. So I'll just click that real quick. Go on my desktop, and I'll call it cube. All right. So now I should have a cube STL file. Perfect. And now I will open up my Prusa control, and I'll just drop that guy on there. Yeah, there are 50, so that's, that should be 50 millimeters right there. So yeah, that's right. So yeah, there's my design. And so it made an STL file. I can slice it now and, and print this cube out if I wanted. 
But you can also do more interesting stuff in there. So there's cubes. Uh, I think you can go, let's see, you can do, go by side. Four, ten, one, like that, and run it. Oh, let me make it, well, I can zoom in. And so you can do interesting things like that. I can go up here and make a sphere of six. And don't forget to put a semicolon at the end. That tells it that this line is complete. You don't have to, it's, it's a full command. Okay, and so there you go. And so I could export this and it's interesting. But the, the real interesting thing is you can uh, make modules and you can make variables too. So I can come over here and say um, radius, right? Because I think that sphere is, I'm not sure if it's, it's a, well, I guess I could check. So if I made that a, yeah, that's the radius. That should be the radius of the sphere. So if I said radius, radius, learn how to spell, I said radius equals four. If that's all I do, I just made a variable. Radius equals four and I, and I didn't reuse it. So think back to like algebra and things like that. But if I come here and say, okay, I'm going to use that variable here. So that equals four and now it's gonna stick it in there. And so I can click on there and so that should be, comes down to a four. But I can come back here and change it. Oh, you really, I really wanted it to be a 10 and change it. And I could come down here and say, you know what? I want to use that for the cube too. And so the cube, I can come down here and say, uh, I want a cube that's going to be um, radius times two. You can use some math in here. And then 10 and 10 or something like that. And so I can reuse that guy. And there we go. And see now, since both of those are reliant on the same variable, I can come over here and say, you know what? I didn't want 10, I wanted 15. And click that and doom, make something different. Um, and so it's very interesting. So there's a lot of things where you can do with these and you can trans, you can translate them, make, put them in different areas, move them around, subtract them and add them. There's all kinds of little cool things you can do, which I'll go over here a little bit later on. There's all kinds of cool tools in here. There's squares and circles and all kinds of cool things you can learn and do. And it's really, really sweet. Um, it's just really cool. So that's just some bare, bare bones basics. But now that I've installed it and done something and made an STL file, now I want to go over Oslo's design that he sent and do a little redesign on it based on some of my needs. Okay, so Oslo sent me in, in the uh, YouTube comments a, a couple of URLs to uh, the code he actually did. And so here's the first version of the code and here's the URL. But he also made a second version a little bit more cleaned up. So I'm going to go over the second version here and here's the URL for it. And so this is just code and it's just text. There's nothing to it. Uh, it's going to take this text and run it as code and reinterpret it and make it into the shape that he made, which is really just cool. And this, this file is tiny. So I'm going to go over here and just control A and control C just to copy all that code. And then I'm going to go over back to uh, the SCAD and I'll just delete everything here and I'll paste in. I'm just going to paste in what he gave me. Uh, maybe I'll make this a little bigger so I can read it better. Now, now I need to run it to see what the results will be. So I'll click here and hit a render. I can also press F6 if that's more convenient for you. So I'll render that. Oh, need to zoom out. And that is what he made. In fact, I already took and rendered this. I rendered. I rendered it. I saved it as an STL file. Uh, put it in Prusa Slicer and printed it out. And it's pretty cool. And it's a little bit wider. It's definitely a little more flexible than what I had before. And it fit right on there. Now, the only complaint I had about it after having used it is um, I really want it to grip in on the size. I want it to hold really, really well. So it's not going to come off when I uh, pick up my printer. I just want them to, st I want these feet to stay on there. I'm, g I'm really good. I'm happy if they slide back and forth. And this design does. I just want to. Uh, I just don't want it to come off at all. And this, if I, it stays on a bit, but if I pull, you can take it off. And my idea is I would like to, I haven't done it yet, but I'm thinking about bringing my printer, uh, even though we homeschool, we do have a Friday school that the district here in Aurora, Colorado does, that where we go, my kids go to a Friday school with a bunch of other homeschoolers. So I think it might be interesting at some point to actually pick this thing up, bring it to school, and show some of the kids after school how to do 3D printing. 
And as such, I'd like the feet just to stay on as I move it. Um, but anyway, so that's what I want. And so this is just cool. So I can take his design and print it out. But also the way that he did this, and he obviously knows he, he, he or she, I'm not even sure if it's a he or she. I didn't check. <laughs> Sorry, Osloy. Um, but uh, depending on how you do this, you know, you could just write, as a coder, you could just write the code. But for convenience sake, you could come up here and put some, um, you could put some parameters in here. And if you link them all correctly or even get really, really fancy, you could do it in such a way that someone could come up here and change one parameter and have it update. So let me see if I can do that. I've already done a one redesign, but let me just walk through a few ideas what you can do. Like here he's got a wall width. And I'm guessing that's the width of this wall. You could look through the code and figure it out once you learn how to speak open SCAD. But in the meantime, let's just see what happens. So it's four, I mean two. So if I up it to four and I re-render it, is it simply going to make this thicker? And it does. So he's done a really good, he, Osloy, has done a really good job setting that up correctly. So let me go back to two because I don't want it that big. But what I want to do is I want to make, you know, I could make this nub a little taller. And I definitely want to make these nubs a little taller. So what I, and actually I've already done this, but I'll go through it again. What I also did is I wanted to print some test out. So I want to make the nub a little bit bigger. So here's one that's a little bit bigger. Here's one that's a lot bit bigger. And I wanted to print out some small tests. So I didn't want to have to print out the whole big thing and then reject it because it wasn't holding the way I wanted it to. So I think I can also come in here and figure that out. So there's the foot length, the foot height. So there we are at well, the foot height, which I'm thinking might be how tall this entire thing is. So if I drop that down to five, yep, you can see that that's affecting that. And that's the wrong area. What I want is that guy, which is probably the length. So let me drop that down to five. There you go. So I could make it, even though I want it to be 30 eventually, I can drop it down to five, which is exactly what I did, so I could print out these tests. And then I have to do a little hunting and pecking, because I am still new to open SCAD, to go, where, where is the part here? Where are those parts located in, in the code? And so as a new person, there's a couple of things you can look in here, and that I've seen. One is this FN100, dollar sign, dollar sign FN equals 100. And that's how detailed you want to be. And so sometimes you may want to drop that down to a lower number. So I'll drop it down to three as an example. And if I run that, oh, that's way too low. Okay, I guess I need it higher than that. I'm still new. Okay, no, oh, still not high enough. Let me drop it to 30. There you go. And so you can see it's a little bit more angular as it's trying to make that circle around. Uh, and so what that can do is if you lower that number, it can render it quickly uh, and you can look at it as a test. But at the end of the day, you want a higher number when you actually make the STL file. So if I come up here and make it 300, which may be a bit of an overkill, it'll be a much finer circle, but it might take longer to render. So there's 300. Like if I drop it back down to 100, it might be, yeah, you can see it starts to get a little jaggy, but it's, it's probably fine. Um, I'm going to up it to 300 just for kicks because it seems to be fast enough. Okay, so now I need to go find out where are those nubs. And so if you look through this code, here's this thing called a module. So here's this module. This is part of the program that can be called elsewhere. So if, if it's reading the code, it's doing this, it's doing this, and it's setting up all these variables. So these are just variable, 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 variable. And then it gets to this module, and the module hasn't been called yet. So this code has been created, but it's not being used yet. And so you see there's another module, another module, another module. And then you finally get down to the end, here's another module, and you see foot. So it says foot, so the first, this actually says call module called foot. And this calls module foot. And module foot starts doing interesting things, which I still need to learn about because I, I tried something, which I'll show here in a minute, that worked, but it was kind of slow. Um, <clears throat> so I just need to probably learn a few things. So here he's doing a linear ex extrude which I'm guessing is going to pull the shape up, extrude it. So whatever's there, it's just going to pull it up 
uh, based on a length. And so you say, hey, pull this up, uh, the foot length. So there's our variable, foot length. Really cool. So there you go, foot length, right there. Extrude this, five. And so it says, well, what should I extrude? And so you can see, well, I'd do that like that personally. You can see here these uh, parens right here. It says, hey, extrude this this much, the height this much. And by the way, extrude everything that is in here. Oh, right there. There we go. Let me do that. Extrude everything that's in here, that's in within these curly brackets. And so in here is foot 2D. Well, what's foot 2D? It's another module. Okay, foot 2D, what's in foot, what is in here? Okay, well, this is calling a yet another module which says round corners. And so round corners is up here somewhere, I guess. Or is that something that's provided for, oh, there you go, round corners. So call round corners. And you can see it says round corners and it sends wall width divided by 2.1. So it takes that wall width divided by 2.1 and sends that number there and see these modules can receive information. So it receives that number and then it starts doing things like fillet, 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 fillet. It starts to round those corners with these other tools, which I haven't done much of yet. I'm still learning. Uh, and you can see it's starting to pass all this stuff around. It's really powerful because you can start repeating things or reusing your code to do the same thing over and over again or do for loops and all this cool stuff. And I'm still getting used to it. I just barely started. So I, Oslo stuff's way better than I could do right now. But what I want to do is, okay, where is this at? So what I did is I tried to poke around. He, he put in some good information here. So these, if you see this dash dash, this, you know, backslash, this slash slash, that basically says it's a comment. Whatever is after that is a comment. It's not part of the code. It's just extra information to help you out. And they put some extra information in here. So you see side nub goes into this side 330 openings. So this part is probably what I want. So as a test, I can come down here and comment this part out. So I can say, comment that out. You see it changes colors. Now if I run it, oh, we failed to do something. I broke something. Broke something, man. Let's undo what I just did. Okay, you're translating. Oh, that's because, gotcha. Okay, that curly bracket's there. That curly bracket is the entire module. So let me do that. So let me clean that up a little bit. Da, da, da. Now let me run it. And my nubs are gone. So that tells me he appropriately named, you know, put a nice comment on here. So that, that is the nubs. So I can look on here, it says translate, and translate just means move. And so you can see it's moving that nub somehow. And I'm not gonna go into all the particulars of that. But that nub is a square. And so that nub has a wall width, and it's taking that wall width divided by two. So I'm guessing, let me rerun it, that wall width is how, is how thick it is. So let me open up my other one. I'll put this over here as my cheat sheet because I already have one set up. And so if I have my wall width, okay, where are you wall width? Okay, so I can come down here and do wall width and say, Let's not divide it by two. Let's just leave the number as is and see what happens. So I remove that, run it, it got thicker. Now I did that and I got this guy. That was my first little test and it worked better. But because of this, it, it can flex a bit as you're putting it in. So I could go a little further. So my next attempt was to do, well, let me multiply it by two. So I went two times the wall width. Boom. And so that was my next attempt. And I think that's going to work. It worked with a small one. Now I want to print it up big. And so that worked on there. And then I also wanted to, I think, did I adjust the small? Well, I can, I can adjust the, yeah, I did adjust the big one. The one on the bottom, I want to adjust that one too. So here is the bottom nub. And we can see there's the opening width. What did I do? Wall width. There we go. So there's the wall width. And so I think I did this. I tried some different things. And I times, times it by 1.5. So let's see what happens there. There you go. Went up a little bit. Maybe I'll try two because it doesn't have to be. Okay. Let's try something new. So this one is 1.5. I'm going to try two. 
And I think this whole thing will have enough flex to pull and go in there and hopefully it'll stick, it'll stay better. But this is part of the beauty. Here's, here's this code that someone gave me and it's, they didn't, they, they gave me everything. So I can, I can go through this code and make tweaks. And depending on how nice they wrote the code, I could make the tweaks really easily. So like he could have, uh, he could have made a nub size. He could have made a nub size right up here to, so that I could more easily change it if I wanted to. Uh, but as it is, he put some good variables here, like here, so I could adjust the height. So let me go back to 30 and run that. And so that's his design. I keep saying his, I apologize. Um, that's the design that they made and it just looks awesome. And, but I was able to adjust it and tweak it to my own setting without having to download the STL file, put it in Autodesk, try to figure some things out and tweak it because I have the definition of everything. And so this is, I still think AutoCAD 360 is the way to go for probably most things. Uh, but for things that can be very mathematically precise, this seems like a really good option. Um, and because it's code, you can put it in GitHub, you can have a history, you can have different versions. Uh, you could, you could point out variables. It's just a, it seems really cool. So with that, I think I have my redesign done. So I am going to, you know, render it one last time. Good. And then save it as an STL file. And I will put on my desktop and I will say, Osloy, uh, damp, uh, I3, MK3, dampener. Dampener. Dampener? I'll say Prusa, Prusa, boom. So I'll save that off and I'll go print this out and then see how well it fits. Okay, now while that footer is printing, I thought I would give you, I'll go over a little example that I did in SCAD to show you a little bit more, better what it can do just through a simple example. He's a little more, uh, Oslo is a little more advanced example and I'm, I, I can understand what's going on, but I'm not quite there yet because I've only done it just very little in open SCAD. Open SCAD. Um, so with that, I, I recently downloaded this thing uh, from Thingiverse. It happens to be thing 2819815. And it's a little toll paint rack uh, to put all your toll paints on. And it's kind of your little acrylic paints. And it's kind of cool. And I printed one out uh, not too long ago for my daughter. And it seems kind of cool. And it's got these little nubs so you can attach them or you can break them off, I guess, too. And it looks kind of cool. And looking at this, I said, well, this is kind of a perfect design. Uh, for SCAD because very geometric uh, and you can put these things in there. So with that, let me open, uh, go walk through what I did to get that working in open SCAD. And I'm still new to open SCAD. So I think I did this a little bit immaturely in a way because it seems to run slow for me when I do this, but I will, I'll go through what I did. So just to start off, I'm going to do a dollar sign FN equals eight to keep the, I guess they call them, is it facets? Just to keep the detail low so it'll render quickly. And then what I'm gonna do is go down here. I'm gonna start to start to design this. So I had some ideas. So I'm gonna go down here and let me say, uh, I took some measurements and kind of made some rough estimates and said, okay, this thing uh, is just a bunch of cubes stuck together. So there'd be three cubes in the bottom. And then uh, all it has is a cylinder that's been removed from that cube at a certain depth. So with that, we can actually do something like that. So first we need a cube. So we can make a cube here and I'll do, uh, what do I do here? So I'll do, 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 do. well first I'll make some variables here. So I'll say my side is gonna equal 40, 40 millimeters. And I'll say the height of the diameter is of one of these holes is 35 and the height of the whole thing is going to be 17 and the depth is 14. And I think those numbers are probably accurate. I haven't printed one out after I did this design, but I think that will work. And if not, you can tweak the numbers, right? So first thing we need to make just a single guy, just a single cube. And so with that, I can say, okay, I'm gonna make this guy and I'll make, uh, it's gonna be a side. So that's the X, a side in size, and then it's going to be um, the height. So it should be da -da -da, height. And, da -da -da -da. and that should give me a little 
tiny cube, which oh, helps to write the code correctly. There we go. So there we go, a little tiny cube just representing one little guy. And now I need to make a cylinder that will go in that that I'll use later on to subtract from it. So it turns out there is a cylinder command. So a lot of basic shapes are just there uh, and more advanced ones. So here I can go, okay, so that cylinder, just to show you what's going on, I'm just going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make a cylinder. So that cylinder is going to be, I'll make it twice as high as it should be, and then some. So I'll say I'll take a height uh, times two, right? So that's way taller than it needs to be. In fact, this should only be, uh, it should actually only be that depth of 14. So this is much bigger. And I'll say, okay, it needs to be the diameter. I can say D equals uh, diameter. In some cases, you can name the variables as they go in. So if I do that, boom, I got that. And so that's the right size, but it's in the wrong location. So what I can do now is I can do a translate. And so a translate says, hey, move everything over. So translate it over four or something like that. So I'll take translate here. And what I'll do, I think there's a couple different ways of doing this. I'm still new. But let's say I want to translate it um, five over. Five over in the X, five over in the Y, and zero in the Z, as an example. In fact, let me go negative four in the Z. I think I can do that. And so I'm gonna translate this, and I think I can do parens, but I don't have to, curly braces, but I might as well for organizational sake. And so what's, what that's gonna say is everything in these parens, these uh, curly brackets, translate it. So I could put other stuff in here too, just not the one cylinder. And so I think, yeah, that'll work. See, it went down and it went over and up, right? Now I want to do it in a precise way. I want it to end up in the middle of that square. And so I can take some numbers off that. So I can say, I want to translate, uh, I want to translate it uh, a side divided by two. And I also want to translate it a side divided by two in the Y. Well, let me do this a, a bit by bit. Let me do it a bit by bit. So we'll do that. And so now that's the X, that should just put it over that way. So let me, there we go. So see, it went over in the X. Right. Now I could want to do the Y too. So side divided by two. Right. And so now that's exactly where I want it to be. Now I don't technically need it to be that big. And also right now it actually reaches to the bottom even though you can't really tell. So I don't want it to do that. So let me, well here I can show you, I can just, delete the cube for a second. So we delete the cube and we can see that. And so I actually want this guy not to be the height, I want it to be the depth that I want it to go down. So there's the depth, right? And the diameter is the same, boom. But right now, when I translate it, I don't want it to be at the bottom, I want it to be a little higher because I want it to, I'm gonna use this to cut out the shape. And so I'll take that Z and that Z that little space there should be the height minus the depth. So I can do height minus depth. Boom, exactly where I want it. And so now I can bring my cube back and there, oh, oh, let me get rid of that. There we go, there we go. Bring the cube back. And now I can't see it because it's, it's actually right on the line. So now I want, but now I want to subtract it from it. So there's other tools to do that. I can do a difference difference. Boom. And I'm still new, figuring this out. So so like the translate, what it's going to do is it's going to take, I think it takes the, am I going to say this backwards? Yeah. It'll take the first object and then every other object after that will be subtracted from it. So in this case, I want to move, I want to move that cube to within the difference. So it's going to say, make the cube, and then every other object I make in here, no matter where it is, subtract it from the first object. I hope I'm saying that right. Boom, and there we go, see, it made it. So you can see it doesn't go all the way down. And there we go, I've got one little guy. Yay. And so now that I have that, uh, I could design some more stuff. So I could copy this, you know, come down here and, and do it again. But now I could make the next one over, right? The next one over, uh, I need to move that cube. So I could come here and do something. I need to move the cube and the cylinder. 
So I could do something like this. I could do another translate, right? Oh, that's a, yeah, okay, that's a good example. I could do another translate. And I could translate, I need to translate it um, aside, right? Side and then zero and zero. And I think, oh, I need to put in brackets. I think that'll work. Doom, but you didn't subtract. Oh, because I have a. That needs to be outside of this difference. There we go. So we translate first, and then we do the rest of it. I think that'll work. Okay. And, uh, and so I could keep doing this, right? I could come down here and copy it and make another one, and now do side times two, right? Boom, now that, and I could make one, I could even come back here and make one behind. So I could say, okay, I want uh, side times zero, right? And I want to move it backwards aside. And so I could, I could keep constructing all these, right? Uh, or I could do the next thing, and I could say, you know what? That seems a little silly. Uh, what I really want to do is I want to be able to do a bunch of those. So I could come down here and say, I want to make a for loop, right? So you can make a for loop, and if you're unfamiliar with programming, a for loop kind of gives some rules that says, hey, uh, you can start some numbers. You make like a little array. It says, okay, I'm going to make a little array. It's going to be a couple of numbers in a row, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I want you to iterate through every number and do that. So I can come down here. as an, I'll do an example real quick. So I can come down here and say 4. Let's see. I'll make a variable. I'll call it x. x equals... What x equals zero, it starts at zero and it goes to 10. And luckily they have an echo command here, I think. I can say echo x, which is not gonna draw anything, but it should put some text over here in this area. So let me run that and see if I broke it. I broke it. Oh, that's because I didn't put a semicolon. Boom, boom, okay. Now, if I look at this text, I can see, look, it did it. 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 10. So it'll run whatever's in that bracket that many times because I said 0 to 10, right? Well, up here, I could make a number. So I could say, I'm going to use this later on. I'll say per row equals 4. And that's how many I want to put in a row. I want to put 4 in a row. So I'll come down here and say 4. Oh, I'll say per row, sorry row. I run that. If I look at here, I get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, if you're not a computer programmer, a lot of us actually start from the number 0 for many reasons. And so I want 4, and th this actually runs through 5 times. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that 0 kind of adds another number. I know it may seem a little weird if you're not a programmer, but that's what we do. And so I'd come down here as a programmer and say, you know what, I'll do a minus 1 you know, per row minus one. And if I look at here, now I have four things. Zero, one, two, three. It gets called four times. Now I can take all of this translate, and I'll cut it, cut it and paste it in here. I'll just clean it up to make it look a little nicer here. And so what it's gonna do now is it's gonna run this four times. Now if I do this, it's gonna make, I'm not using that X variable. So this is actually going to make four of the same thing. So it should be pretty boring. It doesn't break. So you couldn't tell, but there's actually made four of this second object. Uh, in which case, let me go comment this out just so it's out of the way. Which is not what we want to do. So we want to make a row, right? So we come down here and say, okay, make a row, make a row. Okay, what I want to do is I want to... I want to do the first one. I actually want it to be the first one, so I would translate it by the side. The side times the x. The x is zero. So now if I do this, it's going to translate each time that x will increase. So we should skip four across. And we do. See, now here's where the cool power comes in. So now I can come in here and say, you know what, I don't want four, I want six. And it just makes six. And so it gets really cool on what you could do. And now I could actually put this in a module and do some other cool things. So 
I'll kind of go through what I did. So I wanted to actually repeat this. So I wanted to have uh, per row, and how many rows do you want? And every row that is more than the first row actually gets taller and taller. So let me show you what I did for that. So here I go, per row six, row, rows equals three. I want three rows. Let me change it to a four to make it simpler. And so what I can come, now I can come down here and I will do a, I'll do another for loop. Dun, 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 which is gonna be about rows. So I'll come down here and say four, uh, y, you know, cause it's gonna go on the y axis, y equals zero to rows minus one. Rows minus one. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna translate it. I'm gonna translate that guy a certain amount. And let me do curly brackets here too, cause I like the curly brackets, translate. And I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna translate you, you know, zero in the X and then Y times a side, cause we're gonna keep going back and back. And then zero, nothing on the X. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to call a module I'm gonna make. I haven't made it yet, but I'm gonna call a module called create row. And all it knows how to do is it knows how to create a row. And it's gonna set, you're gonna set it a variable, which I guess you don't have to really cause the variable's up there, but I will anyway, it's a little redundant. I'll say send the variable per row and send it what row you're actually on. Okay, and then what we do is create that row. And so it's gonna, it's gonna call a module that I haven't made yet. So I'm gonna come down here and make the module. I'm gonna say module create, create row. And it's gonna take a num per row. And it's gonna take a how tall it's gonna be. That's, that's just the variables I came up with. And then what it's gonna do is it's going to do a difference. It's gonna say difference. It's basically gonna do this, but a little bit more, a little fancier. So I'll just kinda, let me, eh, stop it. I'm gonna copy and paste this section and put it in here. And so I'm gonna take this difference, I'm gonna take the cube, and now the cube's gonna be a little different. So I'm gonna take the num per row times a side and then a side just like I did and the height times the tall because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a whole cube that's a whole length and also it needs to be taller if it's if it's going back and then after that we're going to do another we're going to use a for loop here that's going to go through and create all the cylinders and cut them out So we have an x equals zero, and it goes up to num per row minus one. Dun, dun, dun. I may have to do more videos like this because it's kind of, I feel like I'm hurrying right now, but it may, hopefully it's interesting to everyone. So I do a translate because now I'm going to move over and start making these cylinders. And what I'm going to do, as I translate, what you're going to do is you can you can translate a translate. So here's a nested translate. This is translating up here, and then later on it's translating down here. So I can move a row back and then move over. There's all and, and also do it in a for loop so I can move move. So I'll do x times a side plus a side divided by two. And then side divided by two, and then height minus depth plus tall, let's see, plus tall minus one times height. I think I need to put a bracket there. Okay, I think that's correct. And I'm gonna put that cylinder, cylinder in there that we want to remove. So a cylinder, and that's the depth, uh, D equals diameter. Simple as that. And then I'll come down here and see if I can comment that out. Save it. Oh, don't save that. Now let's see if I have what I think I have. Or did I break it? I broke it. Oh, didn't put a semicolon there. And I didn't put, you don't like that? 
Oh, didn't put a semicolon there either. So now, there you go. So now here's where I think I may be doing something naive, because to me this seems like a simple shape, but you saw how long it took to render. So now I can come back here and say, you know what, I want five rows. Oh no, sorry, I want five rows and I want uh, six per row. And see, for me, it's taking a long time to render. I think there's something I should be doing that's better than what I'm doing, uh, but it does render. And so look, boom. And so there's the cool power is that I can make a variable on how I want how I want to change it. So I could give you this code. In fact, I'm going to go post it uh, definitely in GitHub and see if I can post it in Thingiverse. I guess, does Thingiverse do open SCAD? I, I hope they do. Um, but I'll post it. And so you could download this and make a toll painting rack, I guess, whatever size you want. So I could say, I want there to be 10 and I want there to be two rows and run and just makes it. Now, of course, that's actually pretty big. So I'll just do, I'm going to do a two by two. And I'm going to print it out and see how well it does. So there's a two by two. Oh, let me, let me fix this uh, FN. So let me, the, I think it's a facet number. Let me bump it up to 300 just for kicks. And so now it should be a lot slower. A lot, lot slower. That's why I think I'm doing something naively because this seems very slow. Oh, that's agonizingly slow. At least there's a progress meter down there, so that's that's really nice. Okay, cool. So now let me uh, create the STL file for this, and I will call it well, total paint. STL2, I guess, because it's different from the other one slightly. Save that. And then now that I've done that, I can go open up my Prusa control and. Dun, dun, dun. I can find it. There we go. No, there we go. Back and delete that and toll. And there it is. Boom, boom, boom. Now I'm sure I'd come up with a better design if I hadn't, you know, if I spent some more time in open SCAD, which I hope to, because this is solid. Maybe I could figure out some way to haul this out a little bit more and not make it so big, like put some legs down there or something. But for now, I'm going to keep it similar to this design that this person did that's just uh, solid. And let me just uh, generate that and print that out as well and see how well it works. Okay, so I already printed out four feet and I have them on here. And now how I did an open SCAD, the, uh, I don't know what you call them, but the, uh, the grabbers on the top, I, they're, on the second version I did, they're kind of long. So they grab really good. They're kind of hard to get on, but once they're on, they're really on. So let me try to pause this print and see if I can take one off and put it back on and show you. That's a cool thing is you can, Oh man, I got, <laughs> I've changed the languages on it. Oops. Oh man, I have different languages now. Not spinning. Oh man, I have a different language on here. That's going to be really hard to, to fix. Hmm. End stop, fail stats, control bed. Oh Lord, now I'm going to mess myself up, aren't I? Okay, I got my, I couldn't quite get my language thing figured out, so I just reset it. I, don't, I, I didn't change the language, and I couldn't fix it. I'm not sure. I think it just got into a weird state. So I just, you know, clicked the button, reset it. Seems fine now, but I had to stop my print, so that's kind of a bummer. Uh, but anyway, I can show these feet. So I got the four dampener feet. And let me see if I can get one off. They are, well, now that they're on, they still slide back and forth. So that's good for me. And they are not coming off. And so I really have to... Oh, let me get that off. There we go. So, there we go. Now you might, not, you might want to take a redesign and fix it a little bit and have this a little... Not quite out as much, but I think it's fine. It's just hard to, harder to get on, but it stays on and it can slide. So... Kind of hook it in one side and really just muscle it in there. 
And the nice thing is once it's on, it does slide. And okay, there it is. So far I'm happy with it. Um, it's a cool design. And now I like it because with a, with a slight tweak, those feet aren't coming off. So I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, I had a weird rendering problem when I actually rendered this to an STL file and tried to print it for this toll painting model. And it was kind of weird because what happened was is one of the uh, holes actually went lower. So I had a little weird hole lower. So I decided to come back and recode this a little bit. And it turns out the code was fine. It, at least to me, it seemed fine. So I just re... But I, I re-rendered it. It seemed okay. Uh, but while I was here, I decided to update the code just a little bit while I was still in here. So what I have done... And let me change this down to eight just so it'll render quicker. I, uh, in looking around, we actually have the the giant acrylic water the bottles, the giant acrylic paint, the toll paint, the big ones uh, that are usually eight ounces. There we go. I wrote that down. So I said, what if I could make this so it was adjustable, so you could set the size of the bottle you wanted, so you could make the two ounce or the eight ounce, and it would actually you could do either or. So I went back and redid that. So here's the code, and I'll post this on GitHub and, and show a link here later. Uh, but now we can use the rows and per row and the row height gain and come down here. And I wrote down, uh, 52 is the, is the diameter for the eight fluid ounces. And so I updated the code to do that. And I put some notes here. So if you want the two fluid ounces, you bump it down to 35. If you want the eight, you do 35. And then I put in the diameter for the side so that it would adjust correctly. So here, if I render it and now it's got the uh, bigger size, just kind of redo what's actually right there right now, you know, it comes out just fine. But if I bump it down to 35, since I'm using, you know, everything else has to adjust based on that. I shouldn't say everything else. The sides need to adjust based on that diameter. And I have it in the equation to adjust. So if I run that, you'll see it, everything shrinks. So open SCAD is really cool. Uh, if you know what you're doing and you do it right, because you can have everything relate to each other and make it easily tweakable. Uh, but also, I guess you have to look at the STL files it renders. I may have had a bug in the code, but I, I swear I didn't see it. Uh, so you may just need to re-render it. I, I had this weird cavity issue, but um, but also I wanted to do this. So now I'm going to actually print this out too. So it'll be a little bonus, right? Cool. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to mention. So I did actually print out uh, the one that has the extra void in here, uh, but I didn't think about the height. And so actually the height on all these were the same. And when I look at uh, one I printed out on Thingiverse, the, it doesn't actually, actually have to go as high. And so when I look at this and I flip it upside down, it's different. So I thought, well, maybe people want, might want to do different heights. Uh, and so what I did is I, I changed the height based on that. So now the height is the uh, depth plus three. And that works out. That kind of will end up matching what I found on Thingiverse. But you can change it. So you can come in here and say, you know what? I really don't want that. I don't want the depth to be three. I want it to be flat. So I can come in here and just remove that three. And now the whole thing will just be, oh wait, ah, wrong thing. Oh, row height gain, ah, sorry. I'm looking at the wrong variable. Row height gain. So here the row height gains 12 every row. Can change it to zero. And I can make it flat if I want to. Uh, or go back to 12 like I had it and that matches what this other person did but you don't have to do 12 you could do six maybe you don't want it to go up that high I don't know I don't know what the best fit is but you could the point is you can adjust it to how you want which is just really cool um, I forgot to show you that so anyway there there's that so let me go on to uh, how much it cost to print all these and how long they took okay first the measurements I use so I use 10 cents per kilowatt for my power and I also use six cents per meter of filament. And that's based on the idea that a one kilogram filament roll has roughly about 333 meters. And I'm using the cost of roughly about $20 for one kilogram of filament, you know, including tax and all that. And so that comes out to six cents per meter. So using those numbers for the footer, it took one hour and 51 minutes to print. It took 1.6 cents worth of electricity. And it also took 3.7 meters worth of filament which comes out to 22 cents worth of filament. You add that all together, you get 23 cents for the print. So not too bad. And I did need to print four. So four times that comes out to 92 cents to print all four footers, which is kind of cool. Um, then on to the small toll paint 
rack that I made, which is a, let's see, a two by three. Uh, that came out to six hours and 39 minutes to print. It took five cents worth of electricity. It took 29.94 meters of filament, which is $1.79 worth of filament. You add that all together, it was $1.84 to print that guy out. And then last made like large toll uh, print, which is a two by three, but just with the big bottles. Took 10 hours and two minutes to print out. It took 7.3 cents worth of electricity, and it took 56.11 meters. And that, uh, and for filament, that was $3.36 worth of filament. And in total, it took $3.43 to print that out. So there's all the numbers for that. So now let me go into showing some URLs uh, where I posted all this stuff. Okay, first for my SCAD files. Um, now I'm not sure if there's a better place to put SCAD files, open SCAD files, because I'm new. I would think they go on Thingiverse, but I don't, I don't know where to put them quite yet because I only see the STL files. Uh, so I'm just putting them on GitHub for now because to me it looks like code. And if you're going to store open source code or things like that, you put it on GitHub. So I put them both on GitHub as a gist. And so here's the URL, and I'll post it in the show notes, uh, for the vibration dampener for the Prusa i3 Mark III. Uh, also, if this is a little confusing, you can go to uh, GitHub and look up Patman Denver. That's my ID there. And you can look through my gists, and you should be able to find this vibration dampener easy enough. Uh, so that's there. You can copy it down, adjust it, tweak it. But it's uh, give all credit to Osloy, because he's the one who made it. I just made some small tweaks to it. Um, and then for <clears throat> the toll paint rack that I made, which I made, I put it on gist again on GitHub. And here's the URL for it. And so feel free to copy it down and tweak it and see what you can make of it. Uh, there's probably some other ideas you can do with it, but you know, it worked out pretty well. Uh, then also on Thingiverse, I have uploaded uh, the vibration dampener uh, with the adjustments where I made it longer. And so that now is thing 2849458. So download and print it and tell me what you think. And make sure to give Osloy a shout out and say thanks for designing it because it was pretty cool. Uh, but as for the uh, printouts, you know, here's here's the toll paint guys. They worked out pretty well. I'm I'm pretty happy with it because now with that adjustment, it actually matches the one I found on Thingiverse. Um, it's kind of nice. And also I have this giant one, so I may make some more adjustments and tweaks. I don't know, and maybe I can make something cool and maybe if I find a design I like or a size I like, maybe I'll upload to Thingiverse. Uh, but for now, it's an OpenSCAD file. Just make your own. So, uh, I've had a lot of fun with this OpenSCAD. I, I, I want to do more of it. It's definitely a really cool tool, uh, and a really cool tool to teach some homeschoolers on design and mathematics and a little bit of programming. So I'm I'm stoked. I'm definitely gonna do more videos on it at some point because it's it's pretty cool. But anyway, signing off. Hey. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we are doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.